The video you're about to see features a rare, beautiful, and amazing upright piano, but it does have one small flaw, and that would be the fact that it is somewhat out of tune. Now, the reason I'm still bringing you this video, regardless of the fact that the piano is out of tune, is because the piano itself is so amazing, so unusual, so beautiful, and so rare that I'll probably never ever see one again. So even though the fact that it was slightly out of tune, I still decided to make this video and I wanted to do this intro to explain why and to explain that it is out of tune. The reason it's out of tune is because the piano was recently restored and it had brand new strings put on it. When you put strings on a piano, they stretch, but they're not used to being stretched so they want to kind of unstretch themselves. So basically when you first restring a piano, you're going to have to tune it four or five, six, maybe even more times to get it to stay in tune for a reasonable amount of time. And this piano had only been tuned about twice, so it was already starting to go out of tune. And not only do the strings stretch when you first put them on a new piano, but when you first restring a piano, sometimes the harp can even actually warp and change shape ever slightly as the thousands of pounds of string pressure are being loaded onto it. So that is why the piano is out of tune. I wanted to make an announcement that it is out of tune so that people wouldn't yell about it, but hopefully you can enjoy the piano anyway. I hope you enjoy. Today I am here at DC Pianos in Berkeley, California with one of the most beautiful uprights that I have ever seen in my life. Now what's kind of cool to me and interesting is that the name of this piano is B. Schoeninger, which you probably haven't heard of and I hadn't ever heard of, but sometimes it's the piano brands that you've never heard of before that actually are the best. The artwork on the case alone is pretty much unmatched. I've never really seen anything quite like this, certainly in an upright. I have seen some fancy grands from the turn of the century that have ornately carved legs, but I've never quite seen an upright piano <coughs> that actually has uh, designs like this on it. These ones, I know they're not pineapples, but they remind me kind of of pineapples because they've got that diagonal like crisscross pattern on them. Obviously they're not pineapples, but I look at that pattern and I think of a pineapple. But what they are, actually I don't really know what they're supposed to look like, I just do ornamental. But all the way around them, they have these really delicately carved flowers. I don't even know how they would have done that, but it's beautiful. And the inside, the little lattice work, there is a little texture. And all the way along up the top, there's a neat carving design on the sides of the pianos. There's like a really cool shell design. I'll show you a picture of that on the side of the piano. There's a cool shell. Also on the other side, there's like a shell-ish looking design. On the front here, there's a little like bead work or whatever you want to call this on the front of this piano here. And that also is kind of neat. And the legs of the piano also have some carving. At the very bottom of the piano, it kind of reminds me of like claws or like, you know, like the, the paws of some kind of an animal except square and made into a piano. You can kind of see what I'm talking about right there, like those claws and then like the individual toes. It's kind of an interesting look there, just all of a sudden like animal feet at the bottom of the piano. But it's a really, really beautiful piano. The wood that it's made of is also really gorgeous as well, and that adds to the beauty of the piano. Simply looking at this piano, is absolutely marvelous and it's amazing. I've never seen anything like this quite before and I probably won't ever again because I've never heard of B. Schoeninger. What's kind of funny is on the logo it says New Haven, Connecticut. It says comma, it has New Haven with a comma after it and then it says con with two N's and a period. I have to imagine that stands for Connecticut. Then it says established 1850 and then underneath it says New York. So was it made in Connecticut or was it made in New York? And then on the inside here it says New Haven, New York. So I don't know what's going on with that, but it's really funny that it says it's made in Connecticut, but also made in New York. So maybe some of you guys know what's going on there, or perhaps it's just a discrepancy between the logo and the harp. I don't know, but I thought that was kind of funny that it actually, I don't know where it was made, Connecticut or New York. But regardless of where this piano was made, it is absolutely gorgeous. So let me play a few things on it for you. But before I do that, I actually want to take off this amazing front panel and show you guys the inside because it's been completely restored. This is not the original finish. It has been refinished perfectly, I might add, by the folks here at DC Panels, and they've done fantastic work on the inside, brand new strings, many brand new action components, and it all comes together to make a beautiful upright piano. So let me show you some of the inside. It's not something I do all the time in my videos, but I did take the front panel off of a upright piano recently, and people seem to enjoy that. So let me take the front panel off of this one and show you what the action looks like on this one. So now we have the front panel off of the B. Schoeninger piano, and as you can see, the inside is almost just as beautiful as the outside. The front panel on it was absolutely gorgeous, but the inside of it is also a work of art, but in a different way. The folks here at DC Pianos put a lot of work and a lot of time into their pianos when they go to restore them, and they estimate that they've probably put about 200 hours into this piano. They don't like keep logs, they don't know exactly how long, but it's around 200. It could be more, might be a little bit less, but it's probably in the ballpark of 200 hours 
restoring this panel. That would include the exterior, the cabinet, because that's all refinished. All the metal parts have been re-nickled and uh, restored. And then the inside also has had a lot of work done to it as well. You can see there are still some original parts. The back checks here are original. And um, some parts here, I guess that maybe this is the whipping or some, some component down here. It still is original. But they're all in really good shape. And also these dowels that connect the ends of the keys up to the action. Those are also original. But you can also see that there's some new action parts. Let's bring you in a little closer as so you can check that out. It's when you start to take the front panel off of a piano and you take a look at the inside, that's how that's when you can really tell just how much work has gone into a piano and how much time it takes to build a piano and how complicated they are. And the fact that they're able to make beautiful music is really, it's almost magic. It's really, really amazing. But you can see here that some of these parts here have been replaced. We have Renner hammers. The shanks are also brand new. And then there's also some new components down here that are brand new as well. So those have all been replaced. It's all been regulated absolutely perfectly and it plays wonderfully. It really, really plays fantastic. This bar up here that you are seeing, you might be a little confused what it is. If you've seen the inside of these before, you'll probably know what it is. But basically what this is, is a practice bar. Now, the felt that's supposed to go on this end is missing. They're working on getting some more in, but at the moment it's missing because they they have replaced it. The old was probably not in very good condition. But the way this particular piano works is really unique. You push the middle pedal down, and that lowers the damper bar. And when there's felt here, it would come in between the damper, the uh, hammers and the strings and it would make the sound all muffled and now on normal pianos to release this bar you would just let go of the middle pedal on some pianos you can push the middle pedal over to the left and then and that will lock it in place and then you just push the middle pedal back over to the right and let it go and it comes up on this piano if you push the middle pedal hear that I'm pushing it nothing's happening what happens is you push the left pedal in and that actually unlocks it see that it's a really unique mechanism. Apparently, there's been a couple other manufacturers that use this as well, and it's really unique. The left pedal, of course, moves the hammers just a little bit closer to the strings to make the sound ever so slightly quieter, but the middle pedal mechanism there is really, really unique. Now, not only are the hammers and as well a few of the other action parts, the bridle straps here have also been replaced, as you can see. Not only have some of the action parts been replaced, but all of the strings have been replaced on this piano. The bass strings over here are shiny and absolutely gorgeous. The tuning pins all are brand new. All of the strings are brand new, and it looks like all of the felt has been replaced as well. So they've put pretty much every little tiny detail that you can think of on this piano has either been replaced, repaired, or given attention to. All of the action and the keys are perfectly level and everything in here is just absolutely beautiful and it's really, really amazing. So now you've seen what the inside of the piano looks like. It's a really, really unique uh, look, but now let's hear what this piano sounds like and I think you will also be amazed at how it sounds. It looks amazing and it also sounds amazing, so let's go check that out. So now let's hear what this antique B Schoeninger piano sounds like. I think it has a really, really wonderful sound, so let's hear how that sounds. I'm going to first play my test piece that starts off in the treble, and that'll give a good idea of what the treble sounds like. And then after that, we will play some Bach pieces that go in the mid-range and really bring out the warm, wonderful qualities of this piano. Now, as you can see here, we have the front panel off, which on some pianos is kind of tricky, because on some pianos, you'll have lots of action sound. There'll be all kinds of clicking noises and stuff. But this piano has been professionally restored, and there are no clicking noises whatsoever going on coming from this action. So I just wanted to leave this front panel off because it looks really cool to see all the parts moving and all that. So let's enjoy some cool music on this B Schoeninger piano and hopefully you guys like it. I love the sound of this piano as a whole, and I really, really love the sound of the treble. It sounds absolutely wonderful, and it's very sympathetic. When you play a few notes with the pedal held down, there's lots of other stuff happening as well. It's really, really wonderful. And the mid-range of this piano is warm and rich and unlike really that of most any upright that I've ever actually seen. So let me play a couple of Bach pieces that bring out those warm qualities and hopefully you guys like them.
That last chord, especially on that last Bach piece there, just sounded really satisfying. The sound of this piano is rich and warm and lovely. Like I said, I sound, I love the sound of this piano overall. I love everything about it. I love the bass end of it. I love the mid-range. It's warm and rich. And the treble on it is bright and sparkly and very, very resonant. The whole sound of this piano is just awesome and it's really, really amazing. I don't know if I said this earlier in the video or not, but I would definitely put the sound of this piano up there with the world's greatest uprights being made today. It's an absolutely fantastic piano. The feel of the action is amazing and it also has the benefit of having ivory keys. One thing that's kind of neat, and I don't think I said this earlier in the video either, is that DC Pianos actually has filled in some of the chips that the original Ivory Keys had. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one up here. Let me give you a close-up of these, because they've done a really good job when you can't actually feel it, and it's actually quite difficult to see. So let me show you a close-up of that. I wanted to give you guys a bit of a close-up here of the keys on this piano, because like I said, they did a great job, and I just wanted to showcase this really quickly in the video. Which one of these has been filled in? It's probably hard to tell in the video, but it's actually this one. You can probably can't even see it, but right there you can see a little dimple there where the key was chipped before, and they've done an excellent job of filling it in. Matching the color on these is really, really tricky. I don't even know how it would be done, but the texture of it is absolutely perfect, and it's you really can't tell that it's actually been filled in just by the feel, so that wouldn't actually disrupt the playing at all. And it's, it's much better to have it be filled in like this than have ugly chips missing out of the keys of an otherwise absolutely perfect piano. And I don't know that anyone actually really does that too often. I've never actually seen it before, but they've done an excellent job of it on this piano. There's a few others like that down here. There's some down here that you probably can't see, but they've done an excellent job. They all look that good, and it's really, really cool. So as you can see, now I have the front panel back on the piano because all the pieces I've already played in the video were with the front panel off, which of course lets a lot of the sound out of the piano and will prevent a piano from having a boxy sound. But what I wanted to do is see how it sounds with the front panel on as well because that's how you're normally going to be playing the piano. And I'm not hearing really any of that boxy upright sound that we all know. It still, it still sounds pretty much just as good as it did with that front panel off, which is really, really impressive. I accidentally hit that note there. So let me play a little sample of Debussy's Claire de Lune and show you guys how that works on this piano. That was a little sample of the B Schoeninger piano with that front panel on. I think the piano still sounds amazing. Of course, it still plays amazing. It is a heck of a piano. It's kind of like a piano and a half. It's that good for an upright piano. So that is a review of this antique B Schoeninger piano. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed it. I enjoy playing on this piano so much. The sound of it is amazing. The feel of the action is fantastic. It's pretty, it's kind of in between where I'd call substantial and light. It's not exactly light, but it's not heavy enough to be considered substantial. It's right in between. It's a really lovely feel and it's responsive and it's quick and it's just an awesome feeling action. The sound of this piano is just as awesome and the look of it is also amazing. That front panel on it is absolutely gorgeous. It's taken off because it also looks cool with it gone too. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this review of this Beat Schoeninger piano. It's a brand that you probably haven't heard of, but it's a really, really fantastic piano. So hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos of antique pianos like this at DC Pianos, as well as new pianos, new grands, new organs, keyboards, all kinds of cool things like that. So if you want, you can go check out my channel. If you do, thank you very much. If you think about subscribing and you do subscribe, thank you very much for that as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.